So, so what the plan is here is to uh, get a uh, an outboard motor bracket bolted on the back of this uh, yacht here. It's a uh, it's a Ross 780, and uh, so yeah, we're going to go through the process of doing that. So basically, it had an outboard motor stuck on here before. I've just taped those up to stop the water getting in from the sprinklers that were on last night, and uh, so we're going to have a look at uh, putting a 9.9. .9 uh, horsepower Yamaha four-stroke off the back here um, it's not all that strong here so uh, I've had a bit of a look inside and we'll go we'll go over the top and have a look at see what's going on on the other side all right, so just getting in the boat now not easy for an old bloke so looking down in here, I had a bit of a, an investigation of what was going on uh, behind here. This is a cockpit locker, which is a different skin to the outside. This is the outside skin here, uh, which appears to be uh, uh, balsa cord. Uh, it's probably about 12 millimeters thick overall. Uh, uh, one of the previous owners has had a bit of a dodgy attempt at fitting uh, the previous uh, motor on the back of this, which was an 8 horsepower uh, Yamaha two-stroke, uh, quite a bit lighter than the uh, engine that I intend to put on, so that's kind of why I'm going through this process. Uh, yeah, as I said, a bit dodgy. They'd fill that. They'd they'd put a bit of MDF in there of all things, uh, completely untreated. Uh, they've kind of just wedged in those two bits of uh, MDF in between the this sort of cockpit locker skin and the outer skin there, and then basically held them in place with a bit of expanding foam. So I'm in the process of uh, getting those out of the way uh, at the moment. So uh, I'll, I'll do that and then we'll start the next bit. Okay, so I've managed to get most of the, uh, well all of the uh, old foam and MDF out of there. There's a pile over there of what was stuck in behind there. Why anyone would use MDF for a, uh, a backing board on a transom is beyond me, but no, uh, well, I've seen stupider things, I guess. Anyway, so uh, we're down into here now. So uh, what we've got here is we've got, this is the bunk top here, and it's sitting up against us now. That looks like it's come away from that or it wasn't glued. So what I want to do is I'm going to run a, a bit of epoxy in between those this, this transom skin and the, the cockpit seat. Uh, hopefully that'll... Uh, the two will bond together and I might actually get the Dremel in there and rough it up and put a put a, a, a strip of glass, a tab of glass across between there and the cockpit seat to sort of bind those two together. So that'll give this, this part here a bit of extra strength of bracing um, up against that cockpit seat, uh, well the, the, the cabin bunk, uh, the, what it is, that, that part there is the cabin bunk. So I'm going to uh, get in there and do that and uh, then uh, yeah, we'll start thinking about how we're going to glass this bit onto that bit there. Okay. Alright, so I've uh, ground out uh, all around the, the spot there where I'm going to uh, put some glass in and uh, I've uh, filled in the old holes with a bit of uh, uh, car bulk basically. I didn't have anything else to use so hopefully that'll be alright. Um, I did have a jew of the balsa core uh, before, so all those holes have been um, yeah, sealed up with uh, epoxy. So uh, hopefully the water won't get in there. And uh, now I'm going to go and round to the uh, outside of the boat and uh, uh, have a look at uh, grinding down off the gel coat off the outside of the boat and then uh, uh, you know, think about putting some extra glass on there also. So this is where I'm going to put uh, some glass here. I, I think I'll run it around a patch around here, probably about out of about another four or five millimetres of glass. Um, I'll take that plate out of the way and move it across a bit. So I'll come right up because there's timber in behind this part of the transom here. Uh, so hopefully it'll sort of stitch up well to that and come all the way down to there, which will then also tie in with the uh, bottom of that uh, cockpit, oh, sorry, the uh, cabin the cabin bunk in there. So there'll be a sort of a continuous uh, uh, bracing in there, hopefully. So, yep, it's time to get some grinding done and 
then we'll get on to some glassing. Okay, this morning uh, it's a nice bright new day. Uh, yesterday I laminated up the uh, the back of the transom here. So what I've used is I've used uh, first of all uh, two layers of chop strand and then a layer of uh, six ounce cloth and then uh, finish it off with another layer of chop strand. So now what I'm going to do is uh, mix up some flow coat so that'll uh, all go off nice and hard and then um, we'll sand it back and ferret. Okay, so the fairing compound I've put over there is all nice and hard, so I'm going to sand it back with the, the finishing sander. Okay, start on another day. Uh, so yesterday I managed to uh, fair up uh, the rest of the, uh, the, the um, patch that I've put on the back here. Um, so as I said before, I've got two layers of chop strand, a layer of uh, six ounce cloth and then a, another layer of chop strand. And I've put some fairing in there. The fairing is a little bit of a green mix. It's the first time I've had a go with Q-Cell. Um, looks like you need to mix it about uh, one part of uh, resin, two parts of Q-Cell, and then just use the, you know, the, the right amount of catalyst for the resin. Um, it's a fiddly thing to get right, uh, but anyway, it's, it's there dry, I'll, uh, I'll sand that back and then give it a coat of flow coat and that's done. Um, uh, yesterday I went out and got some stainless steel flat bar cut and that's going to sit there like so. I'm going to put a bolt up on the top here and oh, can't hold the camera. And then another two bolts further down on uh, on the brake. Whoa! Keep your feet out of the way. So that we one there and one, and one there like that, and that should uh, definitely hold the weight of the boat. So let's get stuck into it. Okay, so there's, uh, there's my uh, mould all glassed up. Uh, it's got uh, five layers of this uh, special kind of cloth. It's a twill cloth that uh, helps it go around the corners. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's laminating resin, nice and hard. So I'm going to get the jigsaw now and just cut around the rest of that and hopefully it'll come out of the mould. There's a few air bubbles, a few grotty spots around here, uh, but the first three layers went down good. The second two layers are a little bit more difficult, but uh, I think uh, basically it's going to do the job pretty well. Okay, here we go. So another brand new day. Um, I'm going to get on to the uh, stainless steel strap plates that are going to hold the outboard here. Um, I've already drilled them. Uh, I'm just going to uh, round off the corners and give them a bit of a polish. Okay, another brand new day. So uh, we've got to the point now where we're ready to start this up. Uh, so what I've done here is uh, fitted the this bracket that I sourced. Uh, it's made from stainless steel. It's got the big wooden chopping block there. It says it's rated at 60 kilos and up to 25 horsepower. So hopefully it, it does the job. It looks fairly substantial. The metal's pretty thick here. These are 8mm bolts going through there. Um, what I did is I got some uh, flat bar, 50 by 6 mil flat bar, um, and then cut it and drilled it and gave it a bit of a polish up. And uh, so what I've done here is uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've fixed it through up here. So you've got uh, these bolts coming right through. Um, I thought there was uh, some timber in here because this part here, uh, actually screwed into some timber but the timber seems to have probably stopped about there somewhere so it's still actually just air in there but well it's fairly substantial glass so I thought well we'll see how that goes and most of the weight on this is actually pulling downwards um, rather than outwards although there will be some outward force there so coming back around down here uh, the 
bolts coming through here, I've actually t uh, put a tap thread in here. Um, so when this nut tightens up onto the, uh, it tightens up onto this bar rather than trying to pull all the way through the transom. So all the sort of this top pressure here is not transferred into the boat. It's transferred between here and and up here. So the, yes, this is tapped was uh, tapped uh, with an eight mil, and uh, so this little bit sticking out here is uh, is all the thread, the end of the thread of the bolt. Um, which is sort of securely fastened to this strap. This one uh, just goes straight through and bolts to the back. Again, there's, the, the, there's no sort of outward force on this. All the force is going inwards. And then I extended the strap down here because in, inside, on the other side of the transom, the, uh, one of the quarter berths, the um, fiberglass moulding on the inside sort of comes up to about here somewhere and it's got a lip. So basically there's a rigid fiberglass sort of, uh, uh, well, it's the top of the bunk anyway, f facing, you know, flat like this. So this is pressing up against that bunk, which, you know, extends through the, you know, right up to the... the, the um, next bulkhead so that can take a lot of force pushing against it so hopefully between all that uh, this is going to handle it quite well um, it's it's fairly solid and doesn't wobble around too much so I'm not going to overdo it so then I've run the cables here the control cables they're coming around here inside the transom here this bit's hollow it's it's up to about here though there's some uh, extra uh, timber or, or you know glassing in it's quite thick here it's solid here but then it stops about here and then it becomes open again uh, and when I get around to the other side you'll see why um, so there's this is open here and it runs down and that can now go into the the actual inside of the boat for the forward control um, the electrical cables I've run here again this is an open space here and the electrical cables run straight down through this sort of open gap in between the, the, the cockpit skin and the transom and uh, again also inside the boat and off to the battery. Right so let's have a look on the other side see how we went. Okay so inside the cockpit now you can see that I've um, got a sail control uh, from uh, Whitworth. Whitworth sell these for about 250 bucks. Um, the reason I picked this is because the standard uh, outboard motor ones have got like a handle, a T-handle, and uh, in the past, you know, things like your main sheet rope can get caught around them and, and rip them off and break them, so at least there's nothing on this to really get caught, except I guess the little, you might lose the little red button one day. Um, over here, I've mounted the uh, remote control starter panel. Um, basically, as I said, there's a little bit of space in there. Not wasn't quite enough to fit the switch, so I made this little block out of poly, a bit of poly chopping board, to space it out a bit more. Uh, this was here. This is a just an inspection hatch, and when you look inside there, you can see there's a bit of gap, and I've got all the, a few of the cables poked up there. I've also run the uh, VHF aerial, which is up there on the post there. Uh, the radios around on the starboard side, so uh, that was a good spot to get that through as well. Uh, so yeah, there's enough room in there, and also the the uh, plug connector for this remote control unit. You can kind of undo this. That's got a fly wire there. You can just take it off. I, I guess you can leave this off on, uh, you know, tropical nights. Uh, gets another little spot for the breeze to sort of ent exit the boat. All right. So now in here, this is where the a lot of the work went into, and this is where my mould went, as you you might m recall. So basically. Uh, used a glass, uh, a bit of gl uh, glass and Q-cell and stranded and sort of glued that all in. Uh, not just Sikaflex, so Sikaflex went around afterwards to kind of give it a good seal so we wouldn't get any uh, fuel films in the, uh, fumes into the, uh, you know, cap. So I've got a poly chopping board here, I've got another bit of the stainless steel flat bars here. You can see that there are the bolts that go through that are tapped into the outside bar and there's the bottom bolts coming through down there. So it's all pretty, uh, looks all pretty strong. 
you know, you've got the sort of bracing, I mean, there's not much in the cockpit locker, but you've got this here, and I guess as a sum of its total parts, hopefully we're going to have enough strength to keep it all in one place. So there you have it. Now let's uh, go and get the thing started up. Okay, so we've got the water running there now. Um, this uh, this one's had a bit of an issue with its automatic uh, choke. I'm still trying to get to the bottom of that. I've tested the little uh, electrothermal valve. That's working. It just doesn't seem to be getting any voltage to it. Um, so we'll, we'll have a look at that a bit later. Um, over there, you can see the start control. I've actually can reach over and uh, get the key and give it a go. See, she's a little bit struggling a little bit on a cold start there, but gets there eventually. So we've got the water coming out, which is good. All good. I'll go out there and give it a bit of throttle. There you have it. Happy sailing, man. Eh?